New Secure Act 2.0 passed the House just this week. And what's in it? What will impact you? I've got my three favorite features of the new bill. That and more coming up. My name is Mike Bernard. I'm the host of The Wise Money Show. I'm also one of the certified financial planners right here at Corhorn Financial Group. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and smash that thumbs up button. All right, so Secure Act 2.0 passed the House this week. I mean, I'm just overwhelming fashion. I think 414 votes to five, something like that. And bipartisan support. And I mean, my goodness, I hope they do pass this thing. And here's why. It gives you more choice. It gives you more option, which is more options, which is what financial planning is all about. In order to make great financial decision, decisions, you need to have a range of choices available to you. And I love that the Secure Act 2.0, building on the Secure Act that was originally passed in late 2019, became law 1-1 of 2020, gives you more options, more flexibility in both your tax planning, your retirement planning, and because of that, your overall financial planning. But with these laws, right, we had the SECURE Act, which changed so much right before the pandemic. And then we had the pandemic came out of the blue and we had all sorts of stimulus laws that were passed and changed and all of that. I mean, there is tons, uh, there's tons of changes. And I don't know about you, but I can only imagine there's times when you look at these laws and say, okay, wow, this is overwhelming. What applies to me? What of all these changes actually apply to me? That's what I'm going to do right now. What are my three favorite features baked into the new Secure Act 2.0 that the House passed. Now, before I go into that, quick disclaimer, okay? The Senate is working up a proposal, a plan as well. It's gonna be similar apparently to what the House passed, but it may not be identical. And then they're gonna hash it out and vote on something. Don't know exactly what will uh, officially become law. I think these three features will, they have high likelihood that they will become law, but depending on when you're absorbing this content, it's possible that we've got some changes, but as of the, the law or the bill that the House passed, what are my three favorite features? Let's get into that. Number one, my favorite feature in the Secure Act 2.0 is extending required minimum distributions. Again, you might remember that the original rule was that for pre-tax retirement accounts, you needed to begin taking at least a minimum amount out of your pre-tax retirement accounts by the, by the year you turn age 70 and a half. Why 70 and a half? Who in the world knows? We stopped counting half birthdays back when you were six, but for some reason, the IRS still had some rules that had half birthdays. Well, the Secure Act 1.0 uh, that was passed in late 2019 became law 1-1-2020 uh, said, all right, you don't have to start taking your required minimum distribution until the year you turn age 72. Secure Act 2.0 would push that out to 75, not for a decade, but 75. Why do I love this? Again, it gives you more choice. It gives you more options. If you don't need the money, I love the idea of delaying when you're required to take it out. Now, no, that means you might have higher required minimum distributions at age 75, 76, 77, because you'd have more money in that account. But still, I'll, I'll, I'll take that. If you need the money before, then take it out. But, but I love the ability to delay when you you'd be required to do so until age 75. So the new rule within the Secure Act 2.0, as was passed by the, the, by the House, is um, the uh, RMD age would move to age 73 starting in 2023. So this would apply to individuals who reach age 72 after 1231 of 2022 and age 73 all the way up until January 1st of 2030. So meaning starting next year, it would move to age 73 and it would be that way all the way until 2030, okay? At 2030, it moves to age 74, okay? And then it ultimately rests 10 years after right now, moving that RMD age to age 75 uh, starting in 2033. My second favorite feature within the Secure Act 2.0 that the House passed is expanding your catch-up contribution. Once again, this gives you more choice. It gives you more ability. You don't have to save up this extra amount, but you can. So it expands the catch-up contributions, but in a sort of complicated way. So uh, it's not very easy to understand. Here's how catch-up contributions work right now. For your 401k or, for, or your 403b, you can contribute up to 100% of what you earn. 
with a cap at 20,500, okay? The year that you turn age 50, you're allowed to do another $6,500 in catch-up contribution, making your total contribution limit the year you turn age 50 into a 401k or, or 403b, 27,000 between those two, okay? In the new Secure Act 2.0, it adds a special catch-up contribution in just the years that you're age 62, 63, and 64. Moving your catch-up contribution instead of being $6,500 during those three years, making it an extra 10 grand you can contribute as catch-up. Love that idea. Once again, you don't have to contribute that extra amount. You're just able to, and therefore, Secure Act 2.0 giving you more options with your catch-up contributions, despite making it a little bit more complicated. Other expansions with the catch-up contribution baked into this House bill that was passed is for IRAs and Roth IRAs, your contribution limit is $6,000 with your catch-up contribution when you turn age 50 of an additional $1,000. That $1,000 hasn't changed for a while and so baked into the bill, they're gonna start indexing that for inflation, increasing that for inflation, which again, would give you more flexibility, more ability to save up even more into those tax shelters, IRAs, Roth IRAs. And then finally, it would expand the catch-up contribution with simple IRAs. So those of you that work in a small business where your retirement plan is a simple IRA, that uh, you would know that your catch-up contribution is just 3,000. The new Secure Act 2.0 expands that catch-up contribution to 5,000. And then my third favorite feature of the Secure Act 2.0 bill that was passed by the House is that you can make your employer match contributions to your 401k Roth contributions. I love this idea, guys. I don't know what video it was, but just I think a couple weeks ago, I was doing a video where I was just talking about how, wow, that would be awesome. I would love it if they passed something like that. And to me, it didn't make sense why they didn't already have that law in place. Well, they're baking it into Secure Act 2.0. So here's how it works right now. Your contributions into your 401k, 403b, you can choose, if your plan allows, you can choose those to be pre-tax or Roth contributions. And if you're young or if you think tax rate are going to be higher or you're going to make more in the future, you're going to want to contribute Roth, work with your CFP, make sure that that's the case, but contribute Roth. But if you've got an employer match, all of those employer match dollars right now are coming in pre-tax, okay? They don't get added to your W-2. The company deducts that contribution off of their uh, tax return. You don't add it on your tax return. That means it's pre-tax money in your 401k that when you would draw it out there in the future, you're gonna need to pay tax on. Why not raise your hand and say, you know what? I want, I want my company contributions, my company match, to be Roth contributions. I'm willing to include that on my income this year so that the company match dollars are Roth and can grow tax-free for the rest of my life. To me, it never made, it hasn't made sense why they didn't put that in place to begin with. Now this law would put that in place. Apparently, you can choose that up to all or even a portion of your employer match could be considered Roth contributions. Your company would still deduct them, but you'd be claiming this match as income on your tax return. What we don't know is when you do that, would they increase your withholdings on your pay stub to account for it? Or would this just be extra income on your W-2 that now could mean you owe taxes and you've just got to plan ahead for that? We don't know. But I love the idea for those of you that it really makes sense to have Roth contributions, if you so choose, could turn your company match into Roth contributions as well. So you've got all Roth dollars growing in your 401k, growing tax-free forever. Just imagine starting your career age 22, something like that, working 40 years, having all of your contributions Roth, all your company, your employer match dollars Roth, so that that account is growing, all dollars growing tax-free for your future. Imagine the power of that. I love that idea. Once again, once again, this gives you more flexibility, more options. There's a lot more baked into the Secure Act 2.0, automatic uh, enrollment for 401ks, some tax credits for businesses. There's several other things baked in, but these are the three features that are my favorite that will likely impact you the most depending on your situation. Work with your certified financial planner. What I love about the Secure Act 2.0, not that it makes things more complicated, although that's probably job security for CFPs like me and my team that do comprehensive financial planning. Yes, it's complicated, okay? 
way, but the big idea is complicated. You have more choice. And again, all of financial planning is about looking at what are your options? What are your choices? And let's look at all six areas of your financial life to make sure we're picking the best choice out of a range of good ones. Well, if the laws are expanded, like they're suggesting here in the Secure Act 2.0, you now automatically have more choice. You've got more choice to delay your withdrawals for your, for your uh, required minimum distribution. You could do more Roth conversions if that's the case. You could contribute more with these expanded uh, uh, catch-up contributions, and you could choose, you don't have to, you could choose to have your employer match dollars go Roth instead of pre-tax. Love these extra choices, but it's no substitute. Just awareness of these is no substitute for doing the comprehensive financial planning work with your CFP to see which of these, if they become law, you should take advantage of. Work with your CFP on that. If you don't have a CFP on your team, you can contact one on my team. Find us online, corhorn.com. That's corhorn with K. Wisemoneyshow.com. You can find us there as well, or give us a call, 574-247-5898. All right, there you have it. Go out and take your next wise step in your financial life.